vegetarian cooking with me, Stay Chick, Different Dog, and Wacky Dave will be my uh, musical assistant today. Today we will be cooking two things. I'm kind of doing it in reverse order. Apple pie and pierogies. Everything is completely vegetarian. And uh, I mean completely, I mean uh, no eggs or dairy uh, products or anything like that. So let's start with the apple pie first. I like to make apple pie with Macintosh apples. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, Granny Smith. You know what I mean? Then that's not cutting it for me. Macintosh apples are sweet to begin with. You cook them, they are ten times sweeter. It's ridiculous. So, what I've done is I've gone ahead and went out to a local deli. If you really want to be a uh, stick with more like uh, organicness or whatever, go to a you know, local health and shop and get organic apples. With, you know, but I just went to uh, the West Side Market right here on 110th Street. And I bought myself seven Macintosh apples. All of them are about this size, and I've already gone ahead and peeled them. <laughs> so, let me just tell you what you'll need to start off. Seven apples, six, seven, eight. Depends on their size. I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. Um, you'll need two cups of flour, all-purpose enriched is fine with me. But uh, again, if you want to get organic, wheat-free flour, any kind of flour is fine. A little bit of salt. It's so little, like a half a teaspoon. Easily could be cut out if you were not uh, <coughs> interested in salting your apple pie. Uh, six tablespoons of solid vegetable shortening, which we have. Some more. Vegetable shortening. Crisco, same thing. I just, uh, it's all the same, so you might as well buy the bargain product. Two seventy nine for this big, this big three pound tub. <coughs> all right. The recipe calls for butter. I use uh, dairy free soy margarine. I mean, if you're not a vegetarian, this pie is kicking anyway. So use butter if you want or whatever. But I'm not into it. And uh, a half a cup of cold water. And for the filling, you just need the apples, some sugar, some cinnamon, and uh, some more margarine. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these apples up now, and then we'll be ready to start. Slices have all been cut up, and you can just cut them up into, uh, you know, just chunky little apple bits. That's all you need. A little chunky apple bits. All right. All right. And now we're gonna start. We cut the apples. And now we're gonna go right to the dough. Well, you know what? That's not necessary. We can. Uh, since we've already cut the apples up, let's do the apples. Quite frankly. Now this recipe calls for three quarter cups of sugar added to the apples. Whether you want to add three quarters of a cup or you want to cut it in half, you know what I'm saying? You can do whatever you want. I know that when I was younger, whenever my mother made anything, Immediately, the sugar was cut in half. I have no idea why. No idea at all. You know what I mean? Did she think that there was some secret conspiracy between cookbooks and sugar manufacturers to add more sugar to the food? Ridiculous. I add the full amount of sugar just as some sort of rebellion thing. Fuck it, sometimes I put in twice as much sugar as the hell of it. But today, I'm making it three quarters of a cup sugar. So the measuring cup I'm using is a half a cup, so there's one, and there's two. 
there's half of a half, which is quarter. And what you need to do is just stir up the sugar and the apples a little bit. So what happens is, is that the apples are so wet that they melt the sugar, basically. You're not melt it, liquefy. And the cinnamon. It says here a teaspoon of cinnamon. So a teaspoon of regular cinnamon. But my spoon does not fit in, so I'm gonna have to pour it like this.
take the fourth and you start pushing down. Pushing down the vegetable shortening and the margarine into the flour until the, the flour becomes crumbly, but little crumbly, not the big chunks of crumble. So as you see here, it's uh, pretty crumbly. A few big chunks, but mostly pretty crumbly. Now what you do is you slowly add up to a half a cup of water, just enough so the dough starts sticking together. So add about, I guess, a third or a quarter of it at a time. Because if you get it too wet, then it's not too flaky. But basically, assuming that you've washed your hands before this project began, you start to getting in there and getting very friendly with the dough. Bring it all together. And if it seems a little dry, that's good. It seems like if there's a little crumbling going on even as you're mixing it up, don't you worry about that. Because then you'll have a good crust. I'd like to personally thank Mikey Dave. He's uh, doing music and camera work at the same time, which is uh, very hard to do. have to uh, split this big ball of dough into two mini balls. Okay? And then what we're going to do is roll them out. So now we're ready to roll out our dough. What we're going to do is lightly flour this surface, take one of our dough balls, and start squishing it down maybe with your hand, flipping it over, working it out, working it out, and start rolling. And as you'll see, that's not supposed to happen, but that's alright, because as I said before, you wind up with uh, extra dough. Is that they flatten out a bit. 
so the pie definitely does not stay this high. Set this aside for a minute while you roll out the second roll of the dough. So we put this piece of dough right on top, smack dab on top. Sure it covers. Try to cover any holes up without getting dog hair in it. Cut around the edge. Now what you do to seal the edges, first you want to just crimp them down so your pie doesn't come apart while it's cooking. Just press down. And then what you do is you take a fork, put down, seal that pie up. Now in the meantime, already preheated your oven to 425 degrees. All sealed up. I'm going to take a knife that uh, is as free of dog hair as possible. And just on the very top, cut some holes so that the steam can escape. So what you're going to do now is you're going to bake it for 10 minutes at 425 degrees. So set your timer. After 10 minutes goes by, you're going to lower the temperature to 350 degrees. Okay, now that the pie's in the oven, we're going to start on the pierogi section of this show. Dice up three large potatoes, as this will be the stuffing for the pierogies. <laughs> in boiling water and as they're cooking we'll do the dough for the pierogies. <laughs> okay now we're going to start on the dough portion of the pierogies and uh, what we need is Two and a quarter cups of flour. One. Two. Again, this recipe is a uh, total vegetarian. measure or so. Two of those. Two and a quarter cups of flour. <clears throat> One teaspoon of vegetable oil. Mm-hmm. 
water's boiling, and the margarine's melting. And I'm going to pour that in like so. I'm waiting for the dough to cool uh, for the standard 15 minutes. My potatoes have gone ahead and finished, and I've added a little bit of margarine and some rice milk, and I'm going to mash them up. Good and mashed, and what I'll probably do is add some salt and pepper. It's up to you. You can uh, add curry if you want, any kind of spice that you're into. I'm just going to make regular Lower East Side style pierogies because not all of us live on the Lower East Side. You can, I know living now on the Upper West Side, I can't get pierogies around here anywhere which is why I'm forced to make them for myself and Wacky Dick. So our dough is ready. And what we do is we take a small ball, ball of it. Don't take the whole thing. <laughs> Knead it a little bit more. Add some flour to your rolling surface. Maybe a little bit on top. And what happens with this pierogi dough is that if you can see what it's doing, it has a you stretch it out and then it comes back in. So that's an important thing to know. And I'll show you why in a second. Now at this point if I was to cut my pierogi out of this dough and lift it up, it would shrink. So what you have to do is just lift the uh, dough up off the counter and flip it. Or just lift it up and don't flip it. Flip. You should lift it up just so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't sneak back in at you. Now I actually have bought these pierogi makers. <laughs> you can get them at Lecter's. It's like uh, $8 for a set of three. They have a pierogi size. Uh, they have a size that's a little bigger than this, and then they have a huge apple turnover size. This is the small size. But before you get in an uproar and say, I don't have one of those, you can also take a, a glass and then do the same exact thing. So I just happen to use this. It's easier for me. Lift this up. Put it right in the little pierogi maker. And you put about... Mm, it doesn't look like much in there. But you'll see when we close it, it really fills it up. Slam it down here. Peel off this extra dough. Open this back up. And lift it out. And you've got a pierogi that looks as good as an Odessa pierogi. Now this way, stretch it out a little bit with that if you're not using a pierogi maker like that. They're not going to look as nice, but too much potato in there. Move it all to the middle. Bend it 
over. And the same method that we used with the pie will work fine with the pierogi. So that's the pierogi without the maker, which looks just as fine and will taste just as good. With the pierogi maker, that one. Now to serve these pierogies, once you've got them all done, just uh, get a big pot of boiling water and drop them in, and they'll be done in about three minutes, or when they start to float. Ladies and gentlemen, your host of the first house, David Animal Slash Bernard Trump. Shotgun, shotgun, shotgun. 